got a domino cut into the bottom of my cut list so I can stand that cut list up in my miter saw extension wing and all you folks can see this cut list while we start to make cuts in a miter saw. Now that first piece that we want to cut has a butt cut on the left hand end. It's this little self-return cap. I'm going to draw a little line right here. This is the left hand corner. And we're going to always cut the left hand corner first. All these cuts, all these corners are on the left hand end of the molding and we're going to be cutting that end first because that's the end that comes to the blade first. That's because we reversed the molding. And on this very first piece it has a butt cut on the left hand end and it's a little self return cap. So it's cut to zero at an outside corner. Let's cut that piece right now. This is the left hand end of the first piece right here. And we've just made a butt cut. And now we want to make an outside corner. That outside corner is going to come off in this direction, just like this. So we need to swing the saw to the left and make that outside corner cut so the saw blade comes through the back of the molding right at the back of that straight butt cut. So we want to take this laser and put it right on the very outside corner at the back of that molding so that blade will come right through. Let that saw stop before you pick that piece up out of there. Otherwise, the blade will rub on this cove right through here just a little bit, and it'll take a little hollow out of it. And when you put the two pieces together in the corner, the miter will have a little hollow in it, and it'll really bum you out. But this is our first piece. This is the little self-return cap that goes on the corner. Now let's cut our second piece. To cut the second piece, all we have to do is swing the saw in the opposite direction to make the mating miter. So I swing to 45 degrees in that direction, and I make my cut. Now I'm set up to make the measurement. Now this piece is an outside corner, and I take the short point on the outside corner, I flush it up with the fence on my saw, and I'm able to hook my tape measure then right on the fence of the saw to make my measurement. Six and an eighth, uh-oh, from a self-return. That's not just an outside corner, it's a special outside corner, it's a self-return. So this six and an eighth measurement isn't measured from the short point, it's measured from the long point. It's measured from the furthest projection of that crown. So I could make a mark right here, and it's hard to do, I have to kind of swing my tape up out of the way and make a mark at six and an eighth right there. And then I could probably hold my square here and try and transfer that measurement mark from the bottom of the crown, from the top of the crown to the bottom of the crown. Because remember, that self-return piece is cut, the measurement on that self-return piece is measured from the bottom at the outside corner to the top of the crown at the very furthest projection. But this is kind of a nightmare to try and measure that way. There's a much easier way. I'm going to take my square, I'm going to lay it across my crown stop here, and I'm going to flush out the blade with the end of my accessory fence and then I'm going to draw a line across my crown stop. Now I can take the long point at the top of the crown. Remember, this is the top of the crown. The base of the saw is the ceiling. This is the top of the crown. I can flush that up with this pencil line, which is perpendicular with the edge of my miter saw fence. And that means I can take my tape measure, hook it on my miter saw fence the way I always do to make a precise measurement, and put my mark right at six and an eighth. I'll just slide this piece back and get that laser so it drops down right on that pencil mark, which is at the very back of the molding. All your measurements, all your marks, and your saw blade too come out the back of your molding. I'm going to use my finger over here against the fence and my thumb on top of the crown molding to 
incrementally creep this measurement mark right up to that blade. Even though I'm using the laser, in order to dial it right in, and I want to cut this really precisely, I'm going to cut, make the first cut just a little bit wide of that pencil mark, and then the second cut will come down right on the graphite line. So there's our second piece. You can see how these miters made up very nicely. There's our self-return with a self-return cap. Now we gotta cut the third piece. And look, it's got an inside corner on the left hand end. It has to, to mate up with the inside corner on the right hand end of the previous piece. This is an outside corner. So to make a mating miter, all I have to do is swing the saw in the opposite direction. And make the cut. Look, this piece is six inches from that inside corner to the outside corner. So all I have to do is hook my tape on this inside corner. And yeah, you can always hook your tape on the long point of an inside corner. You can't do that with an outside corner because you're always measuring and cutting to the short point. So I'm going to hook my tape there. I'm going to make my measurement mark right at six inches. Sometimes I don't measure short pieces that way. When I'm measuring these short pieces that have a inside corner and a long point at the end of them, sometimes I'll take that long point and flush it up with my fence and measure it almost the same way I do an outside corner when I'm measuring from the short point. That way I can hook my tape on the end of my accessory fence and make my measurement mark a lot more precisely. So that's our third piece. Remember, that one had the inside corner on the left. Here's the inside corner with the long point to an outside corner on the right side. And here's the outside corner cut to the short point on the right side of this piece of molding. The next piece is four inches. It has an outside corner on the left. It has to, to mate up with the outside corner on the right of this piece. And it has a butt cut on the right hand side. Let's cut that one right now. Now watch, all I have to do to get ready to make that first cut is to swing my saw in the opposite direction from the last cut and I'll make the mating miter. So this piece has an outside corner. So I want to take that short point and flush it up with the edge of my miter saw fence just like that. And now I can hook my tape there and make that measurement mark four inches to a butt cut. I want a nice crisp line right there. I don't want a big thick one. I want a really thin, skinny, little, fine, precise line. Now I'm going to take this piece, swing the saw to 90 degrees to make that butt cut, and bring that laser line right onto the pencil line. Let me get this tape measure out of my hand so you can really see clearly what I'm talking about. I take my left hand and I butt it up tight against that fence. I put my knuckle right against the fence so it will not move. And then I take my thumb and I wrap it over the molding and I use my thumb as a fine adjustment tool to incrementally move that measurement mark on the molding right up to the blade. That's how I cut precisely. Great. That's the fourth piece. You probably noticed while I was making that last cut that I made like three or four false cuts first, even though I had the laser on. I just want to kind of demonstrate how you use your hand and your thumb to make those microfine adjustments so that you can cut really precisely with a saw. I don't usually use that technique so much when I'm using these twin lasers. I still use my thumb on here, but I only use it to get the laser right on the pencil line. These days with these lasers, I can cut twice as fast as I used to. I just have to drop that laser right on the pencil line and make my cut. No false cuts. Now we've got one more piece to cut. This one's the last one. It's got a cope on the left. It measures 39 and an eighth, and it has a butt cut on the right. Let's prepare to cut this cope first. 
So I have to swing the saw back so I can make an inside corner miter on the left end of the molding. This is the left end, remember, because it's reversed. So I'm going to make an inside corner miter. That means I'm going to have the long point at the back of the molding. All right, this is what I mean. We got the long point of the miter here at the back of the molding. And all we have to do to make this cope is remove all of this wasted material. All of this raw wood in here, we're going to remove right to the edge of the paint line. And that will be our cope joint. But first, we got to measure this piece before we cut the cope on the end of it. But inside corner, you can always hook the long point. And we want to measure over 39 and an eighth. So that's going to put us right here. And that is a butt cut. Drop the laser line right on the measurement mark. And now we're ready to cut this cope joint. And for that, I'm going to use a jigsaw with a Collins coping foot.